Now, if you, I guess if you ruled out the kind of meta-natural selection explanation, but still believe that the Earth had these kind of striking self-regulatory properties, then you might be inclined to invoke a more conventional kind of divinity as the designer, as the explanation, right? I mean, that would be one logical path. Well, it's possible, of course, but certainly not necessarily. I mean, you can, you can certainly imagine that, that, that this is somehow built into the nature of life, that it has the, this quality, which we see, of course, in the individual cells. Yeah. What we call homeostasis. Right, but in that case, we know that they were designed, that that, that property was selected. We understand the creative process. It, well, it, 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 it's sort of, uh, I, I think you can put it the other way around, that what's remarkable about life is not that natural selection can do everything, but there has to be something there for natural selection to work on. Right. And so this kind of homeostatic mechanism must have been already there before natural selection started. Hmm. You mean uh, in order for things to be stable enough for there to be self-replicating molecules or something? Yes. And so that somehow it, it is not just a matter of natural selection, but the, there has to be a... a, a spontaneous formation of, of some kind of self-perpetuating mechanisms which we don't understand and that's true of Gaia as a whole and it's true of the individual cells as well huh. but natural selection doesn't really explain that even on the cellular level uh, no but at least natural selection once you've got the self-replicating entities natural selection can explain how you would build up these larger mechanisms that would have self-regulating properties well, I, I, I think it's the other way around, actually. Huh. But and of course, Darwin didn't know anything about replication. Mm, no, he didn't know about the mechanism of genes. Well, he didn't even know that there was any such thing. And, and I mean, it, it, it isn't necessary to have self self-replicating units to have natural selection. Well, you need some kind of transmission, some kind of not always perfectly accurate transmission of information. Right. You have to have some something that can be inherited, but it doesn't have to be replication. Hmm. I guess I'm having trouble imagining what it would be if it didn't involve the replication of information. But yeah, that's an interesting question, because, I, because one of the things I do as a hobby is studying the origin of life. Right. And that's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a biologist, but I, I love to think about the origin of life because to me that's one of the major mysteries and, and it's not, we're all equally ignorant and, and so I even wrote a book about that. And what, have you, what have you had to say about... Uh, what have you well, essentially about? that, that the, you can have... Well, the name of that book is The Origin of Life, isn't it? Or something? It's called Origins it's of called Life. called Origins of Life, okay. And that's, that's important, I mean, the, the, it's plural okay. rather than singular. So the idea is that life began without replication, very, very likely that replication may have been a late development. And I, I think that's important. Okay. It's much easier to imagine life originating without replication so that it, it was originally more like Gaia, in fact, that hmm. it was a, a self-organizing system without replication, which is roughly what Gaia is. So what you first have is a system that kind of resists the entropic tendencies of, it, it, it builds up this local order, notwithstanding the tendency right. of things in general to get degraded. Right. And then after some success at that, replicating material comes along and kind of parasitizes it or something? Precisely, yes. Mm -hmm. So the idea is DNA, in fact, was a parasite. And, mm -hmm. And I think that's that, that's sort of reasonable because the, this whole DNA apparatus has the sort of has the appearance of, of something alien that came in later. So you view the direction of history, at least recent history, as in many ways promising and upbeat, more more good than bad. Is that yes? If I compare what the problems we have today with the ones we had in the 1930s when I was growing up. Hmm. It's certainly far less gloomy now than it was then. And in, in the 1930s, everything seemed to be going to hell at the same time. We had Hitler, we had 
uh, uh, World War II mm -hmm. about to break out. We had a World Depression. Now, were we you had, in England at that point? Yes. You, yeah. And I didn't expect to survive. It was, uh, it, it, it was, for us, it looked completely desperate. And when I look at the problems of the world today, they're, they're certainly big problems, but nothing like as hopeless as it was then. Mm -hmm. So if we survive that, I think we can survive with the problems we have today. That's encouraging. Uh, and what about the, the, the longer time frame of history? If you compare over the millennia, I mean, you're not an historian, I know, but is it your impression that things have gotten better? Well, undoubtedly, the... And until the last couple of centuries, I mean, the, almost the entire world was living in deep poverty and only a, a, just a handful of aristocrats were carrying on the civilization, which was, I, I think it's an, an amazing development that over in the last 300 years, I mean roughly since the Reformation, that masses of people are now living more or less educated and, and, and in productive lives. And, so I, I can't help feeling that things on the whole are going in a good direction. Mm -hmm. And is this, in your mind, the idea that the basic direction of history is more good than bad, is that evidence of higher purpose, evidence of a god or anything? No, I don't think so, but of course it's certainly consistent. I mean, if, if there were a higher purpose, then this might be a part of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's more uh, more suggestive of that than the alternative scenario would be. Yes, it doesn't look as though we are absolutely doomed, at least. As, uh, I, I have the feeling humans are amazingly well-equipped to take care of difficulties. 